We're here at the Freedom Fest 2023 in Memphis, Tennessee. And here with me is the producer of the show, Mark Skousen, editor of the Forecast Strategies newsletter. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us here. David, it's really a pleasure to have you here. We have a full crowd, 2,000 people. We have 150 exhibitors. Yeah. Lots of media coverage, especially with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. coming. There's a lot of media interest, and in, uh, so we have CNN and Fox News and a lot of coverage, so it's pretty exciting. Besides presidential candidates, uh, what other highlights can we expect from the conference this year? Well, we have uh, Mike Rowe, who's really great, you know, of the yeah. uh, uh, Dirty Jobs uh, right. TV series, and he's great because uh, he emphasizes the work ethic and uh, the trade schools and uh, you know, if you want a job, guaranteed, you can now, you know, become a plumber, electrician, a construction worker. You're, you're not going to be uh, uh, unemployed. Okay. We're gonna, so, yeah, we're going to come back to our jobs in the labor market in just a bit. But the yeah. major theme of this year's conference, is it different from the prior years, you think? Well, we always have a different theme. This one's called the Soul of Liberty because we're in Memphis and uh, rock and roll and soul right. music and so forth, Elvis Presley and stuff. And, um, but you know, one of the things that we are trying to do here is defend uh, the libertarian philosophy of limited government. You know, it's the 300th anniversary of Adam Smith uh, yes. being born, and he's come under sharp attack for representing limited government, uh, laissez-faire, uh, leave us alone, uh, we know better than the bureaucrats. Uh, that's, in a lot of ways, is not a popular view among uh, a lot of uh, legislators and so forth. So we want smaller government, and government's just gotten bigger and bigger, especially after every crisis, whether it's the financial crisis of 2008 or the, uh, the lockdown and so on. Government has just gotten bigger and more expansive and more regulatory uh, and uh, more intrusive in our lives. And uh, we, we're fighting that. So that's, that's the whole purpose of uh, live and let live is our philosophy uh, here at Freedom Fest. Okay. Well, let's talk about the role of government in, uh, in one area in particular, which is inflation. Do you think the Federal Reserve has succeeded in its role or is currently succeeding in its mission to fight inflation right now as we're speaking today on Wednesday? This latest headline CPI numbers came out 3%. Uh, which is slightly down from, the, from expectations. Markets rallied on, on, in, in yeah. response. So how would you evaluate the Fed's performance? Well, the news was very good today, and the stock market was up. And uh, I've been bullish on this market, despite the Fed raising rates constantly. And, and there is this fear that they've overdone it, and they've done it, overdone it in, you know, the thing is, you said their, their goal is to fight inflation. Well, actually, they're the engine of inflation. Okay. Because they're in charge of the money supply. And the money supply has increased dramatically. It increased 40% during the lockdown for the two years. And so uh, th this inflation can be blamed on them. And, but I admire them and, and Jay Powell for saying, hey, uh, we're gonna reverse this. And uh, in fact, the money supply has actually been declining. If you look at M2 and M3, it's actually been declining for the first time in years. So they're, they're effectively reducing inflation. The thing is, it takes a long time. It's not something you can, you can win that inflation battle overnight. Uh, but I think this is really good news, and the Fed needs to back off and, and not raise rates any further at this point. I'm hoping that'll be the case, but they do overreact, well, so you never know. Let's see what the uh, markets are predicting right now. I'll take a look at the uh, CME Fed Watch tool and the futures predictions. Uh, the futures market is projecting a 92% chance of one more hike in, uh, I think... Uh, well, they've announced that yeah. that's what they're planning to do. So that's Next all that, week, yeah. that basis uh, for that. But uh, it, it, a lot of it depends on how strong the economy is. And the GDP statistics and my own gross output has been quite weak. In fact, my B2B index, the business spending index, right. down 9% in the last six months. 9% in real terms. So that suggests a major recession is coming our way if the Fed doesn't back off its raising of rates. And so I'm, I'm really glad to see the inflation numbers coming in uh, less, uh, less aggressive. Do you think less aggressive inflation would mean more discretionary power for the consumer? Well, the consumer is pretty steady. Uh, consumer's been buying pretty regularly. That's not where the business cycle is. The business cycle is in the business sector. It's in manufacturing. It's in the supply chain. And uh, it's, it's been pretty slow. It's been pretty weak. And so that's my concern because they, those are leading indicators. And the leading indicators, by the way, the top 10 leading ind indicator index at the conf conference uh, board comes out. Uh, 
they've been negative now for a year, going yeah. down, down, down. So that suggests that we're not out, not out of the water yet. And I think the stock market is doing well because it's forward looking and it's saying, hey, maybe the Fed is going to back off here at some point. Okay, they raise the rate one more time and that's it. You don't think the, Fed, you don't think the stock markets are predicting or telegraphing an economic recovery or economic boom? I think they're simply responding to when is the Fed going to uh, okay. reverse its policy. Yeah. The point you brought up about what drives the economy was one of the questions in your recent piece, uh, the economics of life made simple. Where can, we, where can we read this, by the way? Yeah, the Skeptic magazine was the cover story back in March. Right. And you can go to skeptic.com and just type in my name, Mark Skousen or Economics of Life Made Simple, and the whole issue pops up and you can read it. I printed them up here at the conference right. and passing it around, because it has a lot of great graphs and charts and definitions. It explains my gross output statistic, and uh, it's kind of my uh, summary of uh, my views in economics. Yes, in 15 yeah. pages, so. We, we talked about some of these questions in our last show together, and uh, when you came on a couple months ago. Number two, can we address this? What drives the economy, consumer spending, business investment, or government stimulus? So if you use the GDP model, consumer spending is two thirds of the economy, but it's not really because it leaves out the supply chain. Yeah. If you add in the supply chain, business spending is by far the biggest sector. And I have a chart that shows that, that not only is business spending almost double consumer spending in the United States, but it's also much more volatile. And right now it's uh, moving downward and uh, consumption is staying up pretty, pretty steadily, but uh, business spending is in decline. So that's a danger sign. Okay, but do you think the other components of GDP can, can pick up the slack? Uh, you know, this has been a resilient economy. I expected us to be in recession by now, but we're not, uh, we're in a slowdown. Uh, so uh, I think the moving away from the lockdown and, and rebuilding and uh, bringing the supply chain back to uh, normal has been very bullish. And that's why the stock market and the economy has not gone into recession yet. But as long as the Fed maintains this tight money policy, we're probably going to go into a recession at some point. Yeah. But 2024 may be the time period. And if that's the case, that could be bad news for the Democrats, for Biden and, and the Democratic Party, and good news for the Republicans, uh, but not necessarily good news for the stock market either. Right. Uh, tell us about your outlook for the stock markets then for the remainder of the year and going to 2024. So 2023 uh, is, a mid, is a year after the mid, midterm. So in the presidential cycle, it's tended to be the best year. And it's turning out to be that case. The first half has been very positive, and I think the second half will be decent as well. And I think all bets are off in 2024. Again, depending on Fed policy, if they maintain their uh, aggressive tight money policy, then uh, we could see a bear market in 2024 uh, in the stock market. Here in Memphis, I was just talking to an Uber driver who also happens to be a real estate agent. He was saying his job is kind of slowed down because no one's buying homes because of higher rates. No one's also selling homes because of higher rates, because why would you Buy, sell your home and then refinance or buy another home for higher rates. And so uh, the real, mar real estate market slowed down somewhat. Do you think that's going to weigh down on consumer spending? Yeah, but buying a home is not a consumption item. I mean, that's an investment, really. Yeah. And in fact, it's, it's in the C plus I plus G. It's in the I. It's in the investment sector. But do you think if because home values go down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make people think they're poor? Well, that's possible, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's possible. But you know, Toll Brothers and some of these other uh, 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 more expensive uh, construction companies, uh, housing uh, building, they're, they're actually doing well. Their stocks are up 40, 50%. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the luxury market seems to be holding its own at this point. Okay. Yeah. Finally, I want to address one of, this, one of the charts you have in your article, the decline of poverty since 1800 from 81% to less than 10%. What do you think has contributed to the rise of living standards over the last 150 years, 200 years or so? Well, I think it's the adoption of the Adam Smith model, which is basically let people be creative, come up with their uh, entrepreneurial successes, uh, improve the quantity, quality, and variety of goods and services, capitalism, the Adam Smith model. Free trade, globalization has been really helpful. And the rejection of nationalization, you know, the idea that government can run industries better, I think has been pretty well rejected. Uh, 
Bernie Sanders himself is not in favor of the government owning the means of production. That right. used to be the old standard of the socialist model, and that's been rejected. But there are some threats out there uh, to this model. This has been a big success story. Uh, there's another chart showing our uh, higher standard of living uh, since the Adam Smith model has been adopted. I noticed this chart, uh, and we can put a visual on the screen later, is that uh, it shows the percentage of people who earn no more than $2 a day falling from 81%, but it's really expedited in its decline uh, close to 2000. What happened in the last 30, 40 years? So I think globalization and the collapse of the Berlin Wall and the rejection of the socialist central planning model uh, has been very beneficial. Globalization where foreign companies come in and produce products cheaper and better worldwide. So it has had some negative impact uh, with uh, some jobs in the Rust Belt in the United States and so on, but consumer products, they're cheaper, they're better, they're more available, cars are better appliances, TVs, right, okay. computers, cell phones, they've all been... Uh, I saw a chart the other day on a cell phone replacing 34 different products that we used to have, the, the clock, the, the flashlight, and stuff like that. All, all are now available in a cell phone, so it's pretty amazing. Well, all right, thank you very much, Mark. Okay. Appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here, and... Yeah, uh, it's great to have you here. Good luck with the uh, rest of the conference. Okay, thank I'll you. see you later. All right, take, take care. Keep, stay tuned for more coverage at Freedom Fest 2023.